Welcome back to Nonfiction for Life, the podcast with authors who write compelling true stories and books with great ideas for living well. I'm your host, Janet Perry, and today we're doing something just a little different. We think February is a great month to show our love, our love of books, and to let you show yours. So instead of talking to a nonfiction author, today we'll be hearing from some of our listeners tell us about nonfiction books they love. But before we launch into the podcast, first we want to thank you for the reviews you've left. We know that requires a little extra time, so thanks for the love. We also want to tell you about some fun things we have coming up this month. Some of you might remember that in the fall we had so much fun participating with book fairies, leaving books all over. And now we're at it again. We'll be hiding them all throughout the month of February. This time be sure to look for our Nonfiction for Life sticker covered with hearts and the words, We share our love of great books. As soon as the books are hidden, we'll post pictures on all our social media channels. Also, we'll be posting a poll or two. We want to know what you love. So look for those as well. And finally, we'll show our love by doing another free book giveaway. We've had fantastic feedback about our podcast with Jess Shatkin, who wrote Born to be Wild. In case you missed it, that was episode 23, so you can find it easily and go back and check it out. So to find out when all of these things are happening, the book fairy hidden books and the polls and the free book giveaway, you're going to need to stay closely connected to us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, let's talk about our podcast today. We spent some time in the Bay Area hanging out where people read and buy books. We went to Half Price Books, a brick and mortar Amazon bookstore, a public library, and even Costco. We talked to people who sell or read books, and they love sharing. In the podcast, you'll hear them recommending nonfiction books of all kinds. So get ready to take notes so you can grab a new book to love. My name is Amanda, and I'm a fiction writer, and I love uh, Jamaica Kincaid's uh, Small Place because I read it in college, and it exposed me to the tourist problem that occurs in various countries whose uh, livelihood depends on tourists and how it's damaging. Hi, my name is Gil Rodriguez. I am a car mechanic. And I love to read all kinds of books, especially books that can help me, can motivate me. And one of my favorite subjects is uh, discipline. And one book I am reading right now is the name is Discipline Equals Freedom. It's a field manual. It was written by somebody who was a Marine, and his name is Joko Willink. Um, Everybody needs discipline, because without discipline, we cannot really live, we cannot accomplish anything at all. My name is Lindy, and I am a library clerk at the public library. The book Crossing the Borders of Time by Leslie Maitland uh, was a very interesting book that focused on World War II and a Jewish family's flee from occupied Germany and France uh, to the United States also following a love story about um, a girl when she was 15, the author's mother, um, finding the love again, um, and her daughter going back to track down the person she was in love with when she was 15, and finding them in the end. Uh, my name is Jolene, and I'm a student. I also work part-time at an after-school. I love uh, Pandora's Lab, Seven Stories of Science Gone Wrong by Paul A. Offit, because it's a sto- it tells about inventions that humans have made that at the initially seemed really amazing and life-changing for the good, but actually turned out to be incredibly damaging to the human race. Hi, my name is Beth, and I'm a librarian. I love the book 80 Days, Nellie Bly, and Elizabeth... Bislin's History-Making Race Around the World. Um, It's by Matthew Goodman. It's a great book because it's about Nellie Bly, who's a reporter that was infamous for getting into situations 
so she could do exciting reporting. And in this case, she's read Jules Verne's Around the World in 80 Days, and she says she's going to beat it, which is interesting enough. But then another women's magazine says, well, our reporter is going to is going to do it. And she goes around the world the opposite day, way. And it's following the two of them in their trip around the world. My name is Starry, and I'm a library assistant. I love the book Communi- A Couple's Guide to Communication by John Gottman. It is a very practical book. It is not biased, and it's chopped full of hints and helpful tips for relationships. I highly recommend it. My name is Henrik, and I'm an enterprise architect in IT, working at a big construction company in Sweden. Uh, I love the book uh, Drive by Daniel H. Pink, uh, because it gives a good insight into uh, what motivates people. It takes on a lot of myths and, and actually shows that what we think motivates people demotivates people. So it's, I like it very much. My name is Jean Chen, and I'm a library specialist at Stanford University. I love the book When Breath Becomes Air by Paul Kalanithi because of the st- because it was a very well written um, sto- biography of his life and um, his struggles with cancer. My name is Trevor, and I am a poet. I um, I love the book Anamkara by John O'Donohue because it's a very insightful look at uh, an ins- very insightful new look at the way we exist in the cosmological. Um, grand scheme of life um, by blending Irish um, folklore with uh, Christian values, essentially. My name is Jilan, and I'm a reference librarian. I love this book called Collapse, How Societies Choose to Fail or Succeed uh, by Jared M. Diamond. He's also the author of this other book called Guns, Germs, and uh, Steel. And this one is a uh, Pulitzer Prize winner. Well, I love Collapse because it offers a different viewpoint of the uh, rise and fall of those great past ancient civilizations instead of the traditional um, social approach. This book actually examines the rise and fall of all those great past civilizations environmentally. So it provides an environmental perspective. My name is Sylvester. I'm a teacher. I love Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond because uh, it gives us uh, an overview of how we're presently here explains civilizations, um, colonization, imperialism. Um, it's a great book, and it's a supplement to my textbook in school. Okay, my name is Lois, and I've been an avid reader my whole life. So at this point, I'm retired, and I just turned 75 yesterday. <laughs> so I, um, I have lists that most I get from the New York Times and um, various reviews. And so I always have a list. Every year I try to read the 10 best list of five fiction, five nonfiction. Even if I don't like them, I still read them because I, I have faith that, that you know, there's something in there that I, that I should know. <laughs> but right now I'm reading a book that just came out. It's called uh, The History of the World. Uh, Written History of the World, and it, by a guy named Puchner, or P-U-C-H-N-E-R, and uh, I've really been enjoying it. It's exciting to read all these, what they call foundation texts, um, starting with Homer, and then uh, going to the Gospels, and uh, the Communist Manifesto, and uh, Goethe's uh, experiments with um, world literature. And um, then they go to the Americas, where the Amayas actually invented the second version of the written word, the alphabet. So that's as far as I've gotten. I'm almost finished (laughs) with the book, but it's very exciting. 
My name is Richard. I just met Janet at the library, and she's been asking me about books that I love. Uh, there's one that we both came across uh, called uh, Loet Velman's From POW to CEO. It's, a, it's an after-war memoir about his experiences uh, as a public relations executive for Hill and Nelton. He grew the business uh, from its uh, beginnings into a, a major global presence. Uh, Loet Velman's was, uh, was a POW in the Second World War. He's originally from the Netherlands, and after joining the Dutch army in Indonesia, he was captured by the Japanese and worked on the railroad they were constructing uh, along the River Kwai. And that's what got Janet's attention here, because she likes those type of stories that are nonfiction. And uh, we've been looking at the review of the book, and I would highly recommend it if you have a chance to pick it up. My name is Becky, and I'm a psych major student. I love The Antidote, Happiness for People Who Can't Stand Positive Thinking by Oliver Berkman because it's just a more realistic approach to life. It's not so optimistic and naive. It's a really interesting viewpoint that anyone can incorporate into their daily lives. So my name is Becky, and I'm a bookseller, and I particularly love, uh, I'd say, Stiff by Mary Roach um, because it's a very interesting book. It's um, She covers the decomposition of the human body and all of that weird, gross stuff about uh, corpses, but in a really fun, approachable, like layman's term sort of way. Um, that's It's a very entertaining read. Hi, my name is Clyde, uh, and I'm a bookseller. I love The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg uh, because it's, it's just a great insight into what makes kind of uh, people and businesses and things tick um, as far as building habit forming products and, and uh, one of my favorite things in that book is uh, building a habit forming song um, which was which was really interesting how the music industry came through and built up uh, Hey Ya as a by Outcast as a habit forming song um, and just the the struggles and everything that they had to do that that was a really standout part of the book for me. My name is Elizabeth, and I'm an associate at Amazon Books. I love the book The Zookeeper's Wife by Diane Ackerman because um, it's a story about a woman who sacrifices and endangers her life and the life of her family in order to save other people's lives during World War II. Hi, my name is Idris, and I'm a real estate agent. And I love the book, Ask and is Given. It's learning to manifest your desires. It is by Esther and Jerry Hicks. Um, I love to read this book because sometimes all of us, you know, get caught up with stress and negativity. And reading this book teaches you how to, you know, have a whole new perspective on, on life. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, tends to grow up into a corrupted system. And everybody tends to give up their dreams. And I feel like school kills your curiosity. And this book right here, it kind of guides you to your dreams. It guides you to what you really want. And that's why I really love to read this book. It kind of reminds me of Law of Attraction, um, The Secret. Um, and this book is really powerful. Like, I recommend this book to anyone who wants to you know, change their perspective or be more positive and just think all about you know, positivity, love, affection, and your dreams. My name is uh, Brendan, and I'm a bookseller. I love Moneyball by uh, author Michael Lewis because I'm a huge fan of the A's, and it's just a really interesting book to read, to see the background of the team in general of, of that time period. My name is Blake, and I'm an Amazon Books associate. I love Mindset by Carol Dweck because this book has the ability to change people's reality orientation and make people happier. Hi, my name is David. I work for Costco Wholesale. I love reading Killing Lincoln by Bill O'Reilly. It gave me a new perspective on the historical significance of our president's death. We hope you enjoyed hearing this wide variety of nonfiction book recommendations and that you found possibly a new nonfiction book to love. This is one of the ways we hope we're saving you time 
as we curate books that are insightful, inspiring, and uplifting. Be sure to stay close on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter this month so you can have fun as we share our love of books. I'm your host, Janet Perry, and this has been another episode of the Nonfiction for Life podcast. Remember, at Nonfiction for Life, we believe there's something for everyone. We'll talk to you next time.